Now, this video is a video about something that's very important, an error in the church. I'm actually very upset right now, so I'm going to try to keep myself calm as I make this video. This video is about something that is very pervasive in the church, a very false doctrine. And I'm going to get to it immediately. I'm going to make sure I mention this doctrine right now. It is the doctrine of the phrase because it's a phrase and this phrase carries with it so many negative theological ramifications so many negative theological consequences that i cannot even count and the phrase is this that carries with it many doctrines come as you are Come as you are. Now, many of you will turn this video off after I make this statement, but fine, I don't care. You can go right ahead if you don't care about the truth. You don't care about the truth, turn this video off right now. I don't care. You could care less. Because if you do that, you are one of the goats, not one of God's sheep, who will hear his voice and come to him. And my only concern. Same way Paul's concern was. My only concern is to the elect of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 10. For this reason I endure all things for the sake of those who are elect so that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus and with it eternal glory. My only concern is to the elect of God, the people who God has chosen before the foundation of the world to be saved by his grace. Everybody else are the goats. Everybody else are the non-elect. Everybody else are the reprobate. I don't care about you. I only care about the sheep. And the sheep of God will hear his voice and they will come. John 10, verse 27, 28. They will come. So you don't care about the truth? Turn this video off right now. And this is the truth. This is the truth. The words, come as you are, are not in the Bible. They're not there. And prove me wrong. Fact check me. Check to see if the Bible says the words, come as you are. It's not there. I'm going to explain the verse that you people use to try and prove this stupidity, this foolishness. When you ask them to prove to you, where does the Bible say, come as you are? I don't need my glasses for this. When you ask them to show you where the Bible says, come as you are, they quote Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. They say this. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So that means you're supposed to come as you are, right? That means you're supposed to come with all your baggage, right? That means you're supposed to come with all of your sin. And Christ will accept you, right? What it means, right? Notice this verse. Because the interpretation I'm going to give for this verse is going to be consistent and supported with the following verse and the verse that comes after that. And that is verse 29 and verse 30. This verse says, Come as you are, or come to me rather. You see, this tradition is starting to affect me now. It's starting to affect me. It says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. How will God, how will Christ give you rest if you come with your burdens and you keep them? Isn't it logical? Isn't it, doesn't it logically follow that if you come with your burdens and Christ give you, or Christ gives you rest, that you only get rest in Christ because you have dropped your burdens? Doesn't it logically sound 
Doesn't it sound logically, or sorry, doesn't it sound logical to conclude that if you come with your burden to Christ, you are heavy laden and you come to Christ and he gives you rest, doesn't that mean Christ is not taking you with your burdens? That you dropped them, you came to him, and he took you in? You're resting from all your burdens, right? All your sins. Verse 29. Look at the consistency. Look at the support of the interpretation. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Verse 30. For my yoke is is easy and my burden is light take my burden take my yoke upon you the one that i give you how will you take the yoke of christ the burden of christ and you still have your sin upon you you still have the burden of your sin upon you how will you take the burden of christ how will you take the yoke of christ and what is this yoke? What are you carrying? What are you taking upon yourself? Mark 9. Mark chapter 9. Well, it's not Mark 9. It's Luke chapter 9, verse 26. The Bible says these words. 26 and 24, but I'm going to read 24. It says, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You come to Christ. You repent of your sins and come to Christ. You don't come to Christ with your sin. You drop it, and then you come to Christ. You leave it behind, and then you come to Christ. You don't come as you are, because who are you? You are wretched, you are disgusting, you are nasty, you are repulsive in the eyes of God, you are sinful. You don't come with your baggage and your sin. You leave it behind, and you come to Christ. That is what repentance is. Repentance in the Bible. Not repentance that you looked up online and got it from a dictionary. Repentance in the Bible. Three Greek words. Epistrephomai, metamelomai, and metanoia. Metanoia means to change your mind about your sin, your attitude about your sin. Metamelomai is to feel remorse and guilt and sorrow over your sin. And epistrephomai is to turn away from your sin. If you change your mind about your sin and you're guilty about your sin, guess what? You will turn from your sin. You will turn from your sin and you will turn to God. You will turn to Christ. That is, what the, that is what the apostles preached. That is what the apostles preached. In Acts chapter 20, in verse 21, Paul speaks about the preaching of the gospel. He says, he solemnly testified to both Jews and Greeks of repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. It is repentance toward God, turning from your sin, turning to God, and trusting in Christ Jesus. You don't come as you are. This is what has caused so many stupidness, stupidity, foolishness, abominable sins 
to happen in the church. That's why you can have a man who's having sex with another man and calling him his husband in the church, serving in the church. And because of this doctrine, when you approach him, say he's to repent of his sins, he can't do that. He says to you, the Bible says, come as you are. When a young lady comes to church, dressed like a prostitute, sits in the congregation, you tell her she can't dress like that, she needs to repent. She says to you, the Bible says, come as you are. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, speaks about a man who was sleeping with his father's wife. It is actually reported that there is immorality among you, an immorality of such a kind as does not exist even among the Gentiles, that someone has his father's wife. That's condemned in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 8. It's condemned. But someone was doing it in the church. This is what Paul says. I wrote you in my letter not to associate with immoral people. I did not at all mean with the immoral people of this world or with the covetous and swindlers or with idolaters for then you would have to go out of the world. But actually, I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brother. If he is an immoral person or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or a swindler, not even to eat with such a one. You should not have fellowship with these people. Verse 12, for what have I to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church? But those who are outside, God judges. Remove the wicked man from among yourselves. Those of you out there, when you are a pastor, when you are a pastor, you do not have people in your church membership who are living in sin. They are either not Christians or they are Christians who are living in sin. Christians living in sin must have church discipline. You must do the three-step process. You go to them, you warn them. They don't listen. You take one or two witnesses, they warn them. They don't listen, you tell it to the church. The church admonishes this individual, repent, 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 stop doing what you're doing, support, 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 in helping him come out of his sin. And he does not, then you kick him out of the church membership. You treat him like a sinner. You treat him like everybody else in the world. He can come to church and sit in the church and listen to the church service. But guess what? If anybody who is a sinner, comes to your church and he is not convicted of sin, if he feels comfortable in the church, if he feels okay in the church, something is wrong with that church. But if sin is shown to be what it is, an affront to a holy God, an offense to a holy God, and that you are a walking cesspool of sin, you are a walking offense to God, they will not be comfortable sitting in the church. And the one who has church discipline, who is no longer a member of the church, he might leave and never come back. But you are to kick him out of the church membership. Not the church. We don't kick people out of churches. Anybody can come. But you kick him out of the church membership. So no one can associate him with you and the congregation pastor. I'm going to be a pastor one day. Nobody in the church that I will be pastoring can claim to be a Christian and be living in sin and serve in the church. Serving in the church or not, you will be disciplined and I will put you out of the church membership. You're not a part of us. You are a part of the world. You are of the world and I will preach the gospel to you as somebody who is a child of the devil, one who is not a Christian. 
continuing on. When you teach this foolishness, people actually believe that they can come to Christ with their sin and keep their sin. Christ says, I should come as I am, didn't he? I should come as I am, aren't I? You are to come as you are. It leads to doctrines where men can be a homosexual and say God says he should come as he is. It leads to the doctrine that you will be accepted by God, you and your sin. You can hold on to it. You can cleave to it and he will accept you. This doctrine is false. It is not biblical. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you are to come as you are. You come to Christ, you who are heavy laden, and he gives you rest. You drop that yoke, you drop that load of sin, and you take up his burden, his yoke upon you. Verse 29 and 30 of Matthew chapter 11. And this yoke you take upon yourself is your cross that you pick up after you have denied yourself and you do this daily. It is not biblical to say that you come as you are and those words are not in the Bible and that is not even taught in the Bible. For those of you who believe that foolishness, repent, repent, repent and be forgiven of your sins as you trust in Christ for salvation and eternal life. Repent. It's false. Now you can share this video to anybody who believes this foolishness. You can subscribe to this channel and you can continue to keep me in your prayers and continue to support this ministry. God bless you. Have a great night.